Today, we delve into the captivating story of the Rhodesian War and its aftermath. Join us as we explore the causes that sparked the conflict, the course of the war, and ultimately, the long-term consequences for Rhodesia, now known as Zimbabwe. Stick around until the end as we discuss whether the outcome of the war was beneficial for Zimbabwe's development. Before we dive into the details, let's start with clicking a subscribe button and with a quick overview. The Rhodesian War, also known as the Second Chimurenga, was a conflict that took place in Southern Africa from 1964 to 1979. It began as a result of the escalating tensions surrounding the issue of racial segregation and political power in Rhodesia, a self-governing British colony. So, what ignited this conflict? The root cause lay in the minority white population's resistance to African-majority rule. Rhodesia, under the leadership of Prime Minister Ian Smith, unilaterally declared independence from Britain in 1965, seeking to maintain white dominance in the region. This move was met with international condemnation and economic sanctions as it defied the principles of decolonization. The war itself was characterized by intense guerrilla warfare between the Rhodesian security forces and two main nationalist groups, the Zimbabwe African National Liberation Army, ZANLA, and the Zimbabwe People's Revolutionary Army, ZIPRA. These groups fought to overthrow the Smith government and establish a socialist majority ruled Zimbabwe. The course of the war was marked by significant violence and human rights abuses on all sides. The Rhodesian security forces employed tactics such as hearts and minds campaigns, which aimed to win the support of the local population while targeting suspected guerrillas. Zanla and Zipra, in turn, carried out attacks on military and civilian targets to undermine the white minority government. The turning point in the war came in 1979 when negotiations between the warring factions mediated by Britain led to the Lancaster House Agreement. This agreement paved the way for free elections, the end of white minority rule, and the establishment of an independent Zimbabwe in 1980. Robert Mugabe, a prominent figure in the nationalist movement, became the country's first black prime minister. Now, let's examine the long-term outcomes of the war for Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe. Initially, there was hope for a prosperous and democratic nation. However, Zimbabwe faced numerous challenges in the years that followed. The land redistribution policies implemented by Mugabe's government aimed at addressing historical inequalities often led to violent seizures of white-owned farms. This had severe consequences for the country's economy as agricultural production declined. Additionally, the Mugabe regime's authoritarian rule and alleged human rights abuses drew international criticism. The country's once thriving economy deteriorated, inflation skyrocketed, and unemployment rose to alarming levels. The consequences of these factors, combined with corruption and political instability, had a profound impact on Zimbabwe's development and its people's well-being. While the end of white minority rule and the establishment of an independent Zimbabwe marked a significant milestone, the subsequent political dictatorship and economic collapse have drastically reversed the country's fortunes, transforming it from one of the best living standards in the continent to one of the worst places to live. Thus, whether the outcome of the war can be deemed beneficial for Zimbabwe's development remains a subjective judgment, and we will leave it to you to be the judge of that. Thank you for watching.